Restaraza has 14 bonds in terms of how it's laid out. Can you explain what that is? So the 14 bonds are, this is everything, the rules and regulations, conduct, discipline, everything that they, they need to learn in order to function within that movement are in those 14 bonds. How they're to conduct themselves, the things, their expectations, they're all in those 14 bonds. If you know, you, you're ever, you're functioning in that movement and you stumble, there's, there's something that you have a question about, you always refer to those bonds and it's in there. And if you, you know, live by those bonds, I was always told you'll never, you know, you'll never go wrong, but that's what it is. There's also a plight that goes with those bonds. So the bonds are, is, you know, everything that you need to know how to, how to function and the plight is your history, where you came from, where you're going. Okay. A lot of times when it comes to new recruits, they get sent on missions that the, the older guys don't want to do themselves, you right. know, as well as seeing how they're going to react. Were you being sent on missions during this time? When I was younger, yeah. When I was still just, I was a foot soldier. What do you think were the, the most violent miss missions that you were sent on? Stabbings. Um, there was multiple stabbings that I was involved in. I went through the Cork and Shoe Wars where we were going out. I'm sure it was all over the media where we were going out with, they were putting us out there on the yard with, you know, guys that they knew, we were mortal enemies with the Sureños, with the ABs, and we go out there, we get shot, and we keep on going out, we kept on fighting. You know, those things, I went through the, the shoe wars, I went through the, you know, couple, a couple stabbings. So, you know, there were things I was doing on the streets as well. Okay, were you caught doing any of these stabbings or any of these fights? Because usually that extends your time, right? If you get caught. Right. I mean, it's a couple of them I did. A couple of them I did. The, 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 the objective is always to get away if you can. You're going to stab somebody, you do it in a blind spot. You do it where hopefully nobody's going to tell on you. Where you're not, you know, they got gun rails where there's guards up there that are watching. You always try to do it and get away. But sometimes, like the stabbings I caught were on the exercise yards where there, there's it's a small yard. The gunners right on top of you. They're gonna they're gonna see you do it. So you got to get it in and try to be as fast as you can about it. And they're gonna see you. So you know, I stab them four or five times, or however many times they start shooting at you, and then everybody would prone out on the ground, and yeah, you get written up. And if they they you know they got the weapon and it was a bad stabbing, then they pick up a, a case on you. Well, you said that the, the rapes in uh, American Me weren't realistic, but rape does happen in these types of prisons. Oh, definitely. In terms of, in terms of what you saw and what you heard about, how did it actually work in there? A lot, I mean, a lot of times dudes that are getting taken advantage of in there, if you act like a punk, you're gonna get treated like a punk. But, uh, you know, guys being in the shower and this whole thing about dropping the soap, man, that shit's it's overrated. If you got two cellies in a cell and, you know, you got a weak individual that's in, in the cell and he's getting taken advantage of, it's going to happen. That's how it does happen. But, you know, this, this whole concept of somebody getting caught somewhere by itself and four or five dudes coming in and pinning you down and, and taking it, <laughs> that shit don't happen. You know, I mean, if it does, it's not, it's not on a level where it just happens a lot. 